It is for two primary reasons. One is the rise in the crime rate in Pakistan and uh, the, the inst incidences of um, mob justice or people taking um, things in their own hand uh, because they see there's no police they think they are the ones who can settle these issues themselves the general belief is in the west and also in elsewhere that it's normally when you have to face uh, terrorism or tackle um, and challenge terrorism, uh, whether it is in the shape of suicide bombers or insurgency or militancy, that the only way is a strong military action. And we have seen that that's um, at times counterproductive. At times, it's not effective. For instance, um, inside Pakistan, we are talking about a big country with about 180 million people. Um, if you have to, we are looking at a, at a terrorism group or for counterterrorism policy, it involves um, going after their financial resources. It involves you go and unravel and uh, they, they disrupt uh, their networks. It means you have to do surveillance. It means once um, those terrorist groups are exposed, you bring them to justice and you bring them to justice by taking uh, them to court and developing that, that, that case so that others can see the, the younger generation can see that if you are involved in terrorism, if you take things in your own hand, um, your destination is a prison. Uh, rather than killing someone whom others will say, oh, he was a hero or, or that police was um, wrong in doing that. That's why uh, there, there's uh, there, this emphasis on, um, on reform of the larger law enforcement so that you create a model for ordinary people to see that, yes, um, this is the way how uh, modern states are governed. It, so it is directly linked to governance. In Pakistan, we have this, within the political sphere, we have this culture uh, which is linked to a uh, feudal mentality as well, uh, which, which comes from the British era when, when, the, when the top aristocratic political elite was using institutions like police for their own manipulation, for serving their own vested interests. So that mentality exists, the politician in, in Pakistan's rural areas and urban areas as well. Um, for winning elections, they need police. Um, so what they do is they would appoint police officers, their favorite police officers in important positions so that uh, they can then enjoy, enjoy the perks of these positions, get all the authority. But at the time of next elections, those police officers also help a certain politician uh, by rigging or by allowing rigging to happen. Um, again, this is not very wide, widespread, but this is, I would say, a significant chunk um, of police officers and politicians can be um, can be categorized as part of, of, of this culture. Uh, those are the people who don't want police reform. They may have graduate degrees from, um, from the best universities in the world, in the Western world, but when they go back, uh, they have the same feudal mentality and they don't want reform because that has an impact on their power and their authority. And they are the ones who will not show any keenness for police to reform and go in that direction. They are the biggest hindrance as well. I mean, one would argue that the politicians, the representative of the people, uh, would be at the forefront of such reform efforts. Uh, but that we have not seen happening um, at this moment. Uh, one, to, to defeat this culture of corruption in the country, convince the politicians and, and senior bureaucracy that they need to invest in law enforcement if they want a progressive Pakistan. Because the way things are going and the way things, way things are heading in terms of lawlessness, in terms of corruption, in terms of a use of torture as a way to investigate, if these things will continue, Pakistan will be in much more difficult situation in years to come. But they have a, they have a lot of potential. Um, their various ways through this situation can be rescued. Then it's not that they need tons and tons of money from abroad. There are resources, potential within the country. And I remember from my police years that, that uh, it's not pure, just an academic or theoretical thing. I've seen it myself. I'm convinced um, that, that the, the good police officers, people with good intentions are also there. They are fewer in number, but they, they can make a change. We need to support them somehow. So the purpose of the report was not only to, to 
provide these recommendations for Pakistan, but for South Asia and for larger uh, developing world as well, where at a conceptual level, they should understand that law enforcement model um, is the best model because here you provide an opportunity to the people to reform as well. You are sending in somebody in prison through a whole due process of law to create an example and a model in society that if you go the wrong way, this is the, the end result. Um, direct shootings, military action, um, and these paramilitary operations, and these can be useful in certain situations for in militant zones um, for some time. These are not the things which change societies, which reform societies. So that's one thing um, we, we want to emphasize that when we talk about fixing states, it's not through any um, definitive dogmatic means. Uh, it is not through social engineering. It is through these kind of reforms which impacts ordinary people. For US, for the Western world, it is important to support um, such efforts because in this modern global era, um, we, we, we have seen what is the impact of terrorism in one part of the world? What is the impact of sanctuaries in uh, uh, sanctuaries for criminals and terrorists in any part of the world? That can have an impact everywhere. Um, it can disrupt economy. It can disrupt uh, disrupt uh, the political processes. It can dis disrupt um, economic development. Um, so when U.S. or any other country is supporting uh, Pakistan and other developing countries in helping their police forces, um, that's a way you are doing state building. Um, it's not nation building. I think no one can do nation building. Uh, whether it was Iraq or Afghanistan or other countries, if we want to help, we need to develop the capacity. And helping police is a much better option than helping uh, build any other institution, I would say.